Welcome back. They say that a man is worth his salt, especially, I suppose, if he's the salt of the earth, or even if he sits below the salt. The point is that salt is in our language and history, and today we return to old traditions, making salt from the sea. The fast-running waters of the Menai Strait are famously clean, washed by the Gulf Stream, purified by sandbanks, and filtered by millions of mussels in beds offshore. Here on the Anglesey side, I join David Lee Wilson on his daily inspection. He's a salt maker by trade, and quite simply, his business depends on a reliable supply of clean seawater. David, Hello. what's that? What were you doing? Uh, I was doing something very simple, really. I was seeing how much salt there is in seawater with a, a very simple but elegant device called the refractometer. How, how much salt is there in well, the seawater today, today? Although it's a fairly raw day, it's just under 4%, which is pretty good for making salt because it can vary between 3 and 4%. David draws his water through a pipe and heats it in his nearby salt works and then harvests the crunchy crystals. He started the business 13 years ago with his wife, Alison, and they made their first salt in a saucepan. No one's really done it on Anglesey for at least 250 years, so why shouldn't we make salt from the sea? They used to, the Romans did, uh, so that's what we've been doing for the last decade or more. It takes about 33 litres to make a, a kilo of salt, so there's quite a high there's got to be quite a lot of evaporation. So and is the, is the seawater free? Um, I'd like to say it is, but there's <laughs> at least two taxes on it. And we pay the Queen. Uh, we actually have to send a cheque to Coots Bank in the Strand once a year for several thousand pounds for the use of the seawater. Since ancient times, people survived winter by preserving meat and fish in salt. They ate salted food for five or six months of the year. And salt pork and salt beef formed a vital part of the diet of sailors on long distance voyages. Roman soldiers were partly paid in salt. And the salt trade was always big business. And we know our bodies can't do without it. Down the ages, a pinch of salt has made the difference between a dull meal and a delicious one. For David Lee Wilson, the taste and texture are everything. David, what are you doing here? Um, this is what I'm doing every morning. When we come in, we find this is a salt crystallizer. And by concentrating and concentrating the seawater, the final stage is salt crystals form on the surface. And it's those magical salt crystals that I'm after. And I want them to form in a specific way as flaky bits of salt that will taste right and have the right texture. So this is the art of the salt making? Yeah, it is, it is an art and a craft. It's not just a commodity that sodium chloride that people are familiar with. And it is as simple as taking, and I'm doing it quite gently because the salt is very fragile at this stage. It takes this form while you sleep. Uh, that's right. So <laughs> I'd like to think it all happens automatically, but it doesn't. And somebody has to be on call at night because if any of the energy sources or anything, any pump blocks or anything, because this is being fed constantly with very strong seawater. But by the time it's got to here, it's about 25% salt. So a quarter of the water's got salt in it. The freshly harvested salt crystals spend another night in a dryer. You taste different sensations in different parts of your mouth, and the salt is on the side of your tongue, so I mean, some of the protection has to go, and I'll be able to taste that. And what do you make of that? And that's how I want it to be. Some of the chefs actually say our salt has a slightly sweet flavour. Uh, it sounds bizarre, but that's what they say, and that's, I think, part of what makes us different. The next stage is the packing and the distinctive packaging. 
So the salt, it's taken about 10 days since it was in the sea to reach this point. It's now in a tube, ready for the consumer. And then the final thing is to take a label which says what it is, when we made it, when it's ready. And then at the bottom, the packer's initials. So it was actually made by a person. In this case, it's Ian Fox, who's our key packer today. Today, the Sea Salt Centre started in a saucepan employs 13 people and is ready to expand. Is this part of the new phenomenon of uh, chefs, celebrity chefs, and a great interest in cooking? Um, it's definitely, we've been a part of that movement and that we took this product and found that it tasted good. And we seem to have been in the right place at the right time for once because we've had a trail of celebrity chefs, for want of a better word, have liked our salt from Delia to Jamie Oliver to, you know, a number of them. And we're exporting to 21 or 22 countries at the moment. One thing that um, puzzles me is that on one hand, um, people are saying we're having too much salt in our diet. You're saying have uh, plenty of salt. Um, I'm saying have some of the best salt. And it's quite true that people do eat too much salt, but they eat it in their cornflakes in their processed food and you don't have to have it like that you can you don't have to boil your potatoes with a teaspoon of salt you can just put a little bit on before you serve them now we leave the salty menai strait to see what's cooking in conwy you'll never guess what's on the menu plump conwy mussels what else after all, the greatest compliment you can pay a mussel is to eat it. Well, Graham, lovely, fresh Conway mussels. How are we going to cook them? The best way to cook them, Trevor, is plain and simple. And the way we're going to cook these is with some finely chopped onion, some garlic, some white wine, and just some fresh garden herbs. In here, I've got some chives and some parsley. Okay, so the mussels have all been cleaned with the back of a knife, took all the barnacles off, and make sure there's no beard on there. This is a beard, this is actually the bias, which attaches the mussel to the rock so it doesn't float away. And we just pull that away like that. We don't want that in your mouth. The next thing we need to make sure is, is that the mussels are alive, okay? Now, these have been out of the water for, for a few minutes, and you might see that a couple of them have opened. So, rule of thumb is, you never eat a mussel if it's open before you cook it and you never eat a mussel if it's closed after you've cooked it. So, first thing we need is a very hot pan. When your pan's really, really hot, get your mussels and put them straight into the pan. Throw them in your pan, straight away, a dash of white wine and some chopped onion and garlic. And the best tight-fitting lid in the kitchen is a piece of cling foam. Just put it right over the top of the pan, like so. All we have to do now is to wait for the mussels to open. As soon as the mussels are open, then we take them straight out of the pan. If you carry on cooking them, they're gonna go nice and tough on you. We don't want that. It'll probably take five minutes now just to open it. Right, if you, can, if you just pop the cling film like that, you can just see that the mussels have opened. So what we need to do now, is to take them out of the pan. Now be careful, when you, um, when you take cling film off a pan, it, there will be a lot of steam and you'll scald yourself, so be very, very careful. And can you see all the mussels have op opened now? Yeah. So what we need to do is just pour them into a colander, like so. And then we put the cooking liquor back in the pan to reduce. So just pour it into the pan. You're going to get a little bit of sand that's come out of the mussels. And just watch. See the, uh, see the bottom there, a little bit of grit? Yeah. Once the cooking liquor is reduced down, <clears throat> we need to enrich it with a little bit of cream. 
just pour a little bit in. We don't want it too creamy. It's just to give the sauce a little bit of body. Right, what you want to do, Trevor, is to pull one of the mussels out and use these as pinches. Right. And from then on, all we do is Pin pull. Okay. Pull the mussels out of the shell. Yeah. Mmm, they're beautiful. Beautiful. Fresh from the sea today, salt and a succulent supper. <laughs>